the only building I mentioned in my inaugural address uh, because when I knew the demographics of the country revealed that during the 1960s, student enrollment would be doubled. When I came here, we had less than 8,000 students, and so I knew we probably would grow very rapidly to 18,000 students. And the Chubb Library was not even adequate for 8,000 students and for the graduate programs we had and the research activities of the, of the faculty. So when I gave my inaugural address, I said, the number one priority is to have a new library. And of course, year after year, we presented that in our capital plan to the legislative body, and it would always fall off the end of the table because they would say, you have a library already. They didn't understand that it was not adequate for the, for the type of university we were becoming or the size of the university we were becoming. He tried to translate for them what I was saying, that we needed for the size of the university, for the type of university we had, graduate programs, research, and so on. So finally, about a year before I was to leave, we got the money for it, we were able to build it, able to build it, and we, we then inaugurated it just before I left the university. The following afternoon at two o'clock, Ohio University's new multi-million dollar library was dedicated. After presenting the building to President Alden on behalf of the Board of Trustees, Mr. Fred Johnson announced that it would be named Vernon Roger Alden Library. But then they really surprised me by naming the library, the Vernon R. Alden Library, which pleased me very much. And my little son, Jim, who was then 10 years old at the time, right after that, he kept running across the street, you know, reading his father's name on the library. He was very proud of that. Yeah.